Good evening everyone, it's uh, Reading for Charity again. Now, not had done one of these for, for a while, um, various reasons for that. Illness, daughter's birthday, just trying to find time to get these done. The reading's still been happening, but the reviews haven't, so back on track with the reviews. We'll probably get uh, three or four reviews in this week, I think. We'll try to get them as well done. We've got three already to go, and a fourth one should be done by tomorrow, so... Um, we're getting there, we're getting through it. So, if you've never seen any of these before, this is uh, it's a charity read. We're reading for the Archie Foundation. Um, 100 books in a year. Um, we've raised over £750 for, for Archie. It's a really, really good sum of money. The uh, There's just giving links in the description of the video, um, whether you're on Twitch or, or YouTube. Um, if you've never donated, please, please go ahead and donate. It's a fantastic charity. They raise money for sick kids in the northeast of Scotland. Um, it's a really, really good charity to support. I'm proud to have raised money for them. So, <clears throat> in the effort of trying to get some of these things done, because I might record a couple today. Um, today's book, The Legacy of Herot? 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 Sorry, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. The Legacy of Herot. That's, that's what I'm going for, but it sounds like I've just had an accident in my mouth. Um, Larry Niven, who is, you know, it's a great author. Um... Um, where to start with this book? Where to start with this book? So, um, I did not know what to expect from this book at all. Um, it's another one of these ones that's been out of, uh, out of print for quite some time. Um, i trying to remember when this was, when was this published? 87. I don't think it's been, uh, in print for about, ugh, I don't think it got more than one print than this. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, first of all, and this is something I forgot to mention with, uh, um, Watership Down. Uh, this comes with maps. I am I am always up for a book that comes with maps. Always. I always appreciate a book that comes with maps. Um, be it Lord of the Rings, be it Warship Down, be it this. Like Warship Down kicking around here somewhere. Yeah, Warship Down. There we go. Warship Down came with maps as well. I love a book that comes with maps. There we go. Maps for Warship Down. Always love a book with what? Maps. Um... <clears throat> First, so first, first thing first, it comes with maps. Always like a book with maps. Downside of the book, which I'm going to get out of the way as well. They kill the dogs. No, <laughs> always points off for a book that kills dogs. Always, 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 always. Um, but less flippantly, uh, I didn't know what to expect from this book. I'd never, genuinely, ne had never heard of it before it being put on my list. Um, I quite like Larry Niven's stuff. Larry Niven's stuff has always been quite entertaining. Um, so I was I was mildly hopeful. The uh, there was an interesting little foreword to it um, that Larry Niven wrote, um, talking about that uh, it, the book came about through a, a chance um, discussion with a biologist at a party, um, <laughs> which is that's a very random way to come up with a book. Um, and once once you get to the end of the book, you understand basically where the where the idea came from. So. Um, again, try not to spoil any of these for anyone who's kind of trying to read along or wants to read along. Um, but the best way to describe this book is alien and aliens together. Um, <laughs> it is it is basically the plot of alien and aliens rammed together, in, all the way down to the, the monsters, the fact they fight a queen, um, the. The, the the fact that they end up with a child to fight for, you know, the end of Aliens with the, you know, get away from him, you uh, her, you bitch, from uh, Ripley. The, the fool works. The fact that they need to use flamethrowers quite a lot to, to defeat the monsters. It is Alien and Aliens together in a book. If you like your, uh, <clears throat> your science fiction horror, and it's essentially what Alien and Aliens is, you will like this book because it is essentially those films. Um, the so I I genuinely enjoyed them. I genuinely enjoyed them. I didn't think I was going to the, at the start. The start was a bit. Um, the only way the book works is by everyone in the book being incredibly stupid. Everyone in the book has to be incredibly stupid, bar the one man who is destined to become the hero. Everyone else in the book is monumentally stupid the way they set up their first city where they set it up the the fact they don't set up any defenses whatsoever 
the fact that when they are warned of, you know, incoming danger, their response is to go, ha ha ha, we are an alien world, there's nothing bad here, we've been here for five minutes, we know everything about it. Even after, you know, there has been injuries caused by the, by, I say aliens, the natives, I should say, um, their response is to doubt the, the veracity of their injuries going, ha, oh, you should have done them to yourself, so you feel important. It's everything at the start only works because every single person bar cadman is completely stupid um and that's really frustrating that frustrated the hell out of me um because it, it made for a slightly you know shonky opening and the shonky start of the book because i'm saying going is this going to be one of those ones where everyone annoys me in the book because it's just rampant stupidity um but yes they they, they did that to get the opening set up they had to get the I mean, if they had been sensible and they set up proper defences of the, you know, the only off-world colony <laughs> that humankind has, then none of the book would have been, um, it, there would have been no story. <laughs> you know, the story relies on them being dumb, because, you know, um, setting up a good defensible city um, with... Lots and lots of, uh, of, of of ways to defend themselves against potential harmful wildlife. There's no book. Basically, the first one of the of, of the beasties turns up, and they go splat. Right? Oh, okay, that was them. That was that was, that was good fun. That's very interesting. Let's try it and have a look. But <laughs> so it relies on people being dumb, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. It annoys me in a lot of books, but it's the only way this book gets written. Um, other books where it annoys me is where people are, are dumb to facilitate the plot moving forwards. People being dumb, essentially, is the setup for the plot. So I'm going to forgive it, mostly because the rest of the book's really, really good. Um, in terms of overarching plot structure, there's there's not much there. It's not a book about themes. You know, It's not a book about metaphor. It's not a book about you know what it means to be human in an uncaring, cold universe. It's none of those things. It's, it's literally a story of, you know... Uh, mankind meets beastie, and slaughters beastie, beastie slaughters man, flamethrowers involved, napalm, big steel nets, um, minefields, dogs, water, blood, lots and lots of blood, super speed serum making things go completely crazy, uh, more explosions, we've won, no we haven't, babies, that's basically the book, <laughs> in a nutshell, it's, it's essentially all action after the first you know, um, 40, 50 pages. After that, the rest of the 300-odd pages, where are we, 320-something pages? 330 pages. Is basically just all action. It's an action movie book. Um, so there's not a huge amount to describe. There's not a huge amount to say. Um, you know, I can't discuss themes. I can't discuss... Uh, the you know, plot, it's, it's all action, essentially. Um, the, the only thing I can talk about is the fact that it requires people to be dumb in order for it to work. Uh, it's not a hard sci-fi novel. Um, the the trigger for it being the biology of the monster, um, and I'm not going to spoil any of that um, because you, you you might want to go and read it. Um, the biology of the monster is the interesting bit of the book, obviously because you know it was spawned from a conversation with a biologist, and the um, the biology is interesting and the way it works and the way it's put together and the twist that comes two-thirds of the way through the book that relies on the biology. It it all works and it's all nicely done. Um but it is a, it's just a it's a throwaway sci-fi novel. It's it's a callback to kind of those uh uh kind of forties and fifties pulp sci-fi novels, you know, the um uh, uh, uh the one they made the terrible film of but I can't remember. The thingy on Mars. Yeah, those Mars books. Um it's a kind of a callback to those, you know, the the pulp fiction kind of sci-fi novels where it's the the great white hunter, you know, taking on all comers to save mankind from, you know, gribbly beasts. That's what the book is. Um, I highly think, well, so, do this probably, do this probably, it. should you read this book, if you like Aliens, if you like Alien, the film, um, trilogy, where, however you want to call it, what's it? eight parts that that now or something. If you like those, if you like Predator, if you like any of those 80s films that are completely cheesy, full of action, um, has the, you know, the great white American hero, you know, defeating <laughs> a cold, heartless universe, yes, read this book. You will, in, 
enjoy it because I enjoyed it. Um, it was good fun. It was a good fun book. Uh, I really enjoyed reading this. It was light and it was fluffy. I didn't have to think about what was going on too hard because, you know, it was just an action film in novel form. Uh, really enjoyable. I really, really enjoyed this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shame that there's not actually more of these. I think I, I went and looked and I didn't see any more. Um, because the, the setup for it is actually quite good. I'd like to see what happens next because by the end of the book, well, I'm not going not gonna to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil what happens by the end of the book. But I would like there to be more of those. Um, definitely, definitely like there to be more of those. I think this was one another one of those books, but it could have done with uh, maybe a, a, a suspended en uh, ending. So rather than the ending it got, maybe an ambiguous ending instead, so you don't know whether they're going to survive or not, whether there's yet a, th a further twist in the tale. That would have been nice. I think this book could have maybe benefited from that, but I'm a fan of those kind of endings, so, you know, maybe the ending that it got is the right ending for other people. But yes, definitely worth a read. I was really surprised by how in enjoyable this book was. Good, old-fashioned, sci-fi fluff, action novel, blowing up aliens in a cold, <laughs> unfriendly universe. Really enjoyable. Really, really enjoyable. Next review, which will be tomorrow, all things considered. The start of the Black Company books um, with The Black Company by Glenn Cook. Um, not hugely thick. Um, already got through one, almost finished the second one, and the third one should be relatively swift as well. Um, this one will be tomorrow. Uh, I will speak about it tomorrow. <laughs> Long and short of it. But I'm surprised by this book as well. That's all I'll say. I was yet another set of books going on my list. It's, I'm struggling to choose my top books that I've had to read this year because I'm getting surprised by just really, really good books that I'd either never heard of or never read before. And tomorrow's going to be another one of those. But, um, yes. Finishing off today, this was The Legacy of Hera. Herod? Her he hired The Legacy of the Word I Can't Pronounce. Um, excellent novel by Larry Niffin, really, really good book, um, highly enjoyed it. Um, so yes, once again, this is uh, Reading for Charity, we are reading for the Archie Foundation. Charity read, 100 books in a year, um, slightly behind schedule, but, you know, getting back to it, um, you know, almost caught up again. Um, fingers crossed there's going to be, you know, no more illness, it was essentially fresher's flu from my daughter that, that uh, I got thumped with, so uh, fingers crossed that doesn't happen again. Um, we're getting there, £750 raised, looking to really, really, really want to hit a £1,000 by May. That would be ideal, that would be beautiful, but you will see if we get there or not. Um, but yes, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow will be the next review of The Black Company. Until then, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for listening. Uh, this is Reading for Charity, and good evening. <laughs>